No, that's okay. I'm in no hurry. I, 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 I know. I, I'd love to see the fellowship. So if you want to keep chatting, that's, that's fine with me. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is good to see you all here and uh, on this Palm Sunday. And uh, this is the week that we remember we're the closest that Christ was revered as king on earth. Um, all before what we remember next week. So, but let's, at this time, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the sun that is shining, for the weather starting to warm up again. And Father, we thank you for your love and the opportunity to fellowship in your house with each other, with you, and to sing praises. At this time, Father, we just lift this time before you and, and we just ask your blessings on this fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. He lives within my heart. Do we have any praise and prayer requests at this time? Also, thank you for the uh, message. We just ask that you speak to our hearts now. Help us to take home what you want us to, to take and apply it in our lives. For your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right, if you would, please open up your Bible to Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. And I know that I have shared a message like this in the past. The Lord has just kind of placed on my heart that it was important to share again today. Um, Christ the Lord, as we will talk about next week, is risen indeed. But uh, He came... He came humbly. He came as a as a baby, as a child. He grew up among us, and he lived a humble life. He didn't come for all the glory, for all the fame, for all the fanfare. He came to seek and save the lost. And as I mentioned earlier, Palm Sunday was a Sunday. Sorry. Let's try that again. Palm Sunday is a Sunday where uh, when he entered in, he had coats thrown down and palm branches, and they saw him as a king, but they were seeing him as an earthly king, not the heavenly king. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. We're going to see here that Christ was revered as a king, as the, he is the king. Christ rides in on a donkey, and some believed he was king, and some did not. And we're going to see this from John chapter 12, verse 13 through 19. So if you would, open your Bibles to John chapter 12, verses 13 through 19. Here we see Christ is, who is the king. He is revered as a king. John chapter 12, verse 13, or actually this is 12 and 13. It says, On the next day, much of the people were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. The 
missed a slide there, I apologize. The phrase King of Israel shows that the Jews were recognizing Christ as a leader of the people, a prince, a commander, lord of the land, as king. They were hoping and expecting for an earthly king to rule and to reign over the Jewish people so that they might be removed from under control of the Roman authority. They cried to him saying, Hosanna, which means give salvation now. Hosanna. But the salvation that they were seeking was not the eternal salvation of Christ that he offers through his sacrifice, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. They were seeking a temporal salvation, a salvation for the current moment was only good to them in the current condition that they were in, not in the not for the eternal condition. A salvation of removing them under the Roman leadership. They called him king, but looked to him as an earthly king, not the heavenly king. They treated him as though he was visiting them in the form of earthly royalty. They took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. Mark 11, 8 informs us that many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of trees and straw them in the way. So many place their garments or portions of their, their clothing on the ground as it would a royalty, kind of like the red carpet treatment. Others place palm branches on the ground, spreading their uh, clothes and their, these branches. In fact, they were spreading one's garments on the street. This was an ancient act of homage reserved for high royalty, suggesting that they recognize his claim to be king of the Jews. Again, they were looking at the earthly per aspect, not the heavenly aspect. The branches of palm were a symbol of victory. They also symbolized joy and salvation and pictured future royal tribute to Jesus Christ. Remember, Christ could prove his lineage to be in the line of King David, and this was both on his mother's side and on his father's side, or I should say his stepfather's side, his adopted father's side. Christ had the right and authority to be king, and here they recognize his right. Christ was revered as king. We also see that the king rides in on a donkey. Often we, we think of a king coming in on this royal, majestic, tall, white horse or something. Verse 14 and 15 says, And Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh, sitting on a donkey's colt. Let's look a bit closer at the colt or the donkey that Jesus rode in on. First of all, we see in uh, un uh, the Unger's Bible Dictionary, it states that there was nothing in any sense degrading in the idea of riding in on the donkey. Christ rode and with the indication of victory, spreading their clothes or their coats on the road as part of an ancient practice to welcome a new king. The donkey was very, had a very easy gait, the stride, the walk, and is uh, perfectly sure-footed. They often cost um, very high prices and uh, were adorned with magnificent comparison. People in high places with wealth or importance often used donkeys back in Christ's day here on the earth. So to be riding on a creature such as this was a sign of or indication was not a sign of in, or indication of embarrassment, but rather most likely gave the opposite impression. The domesticated donkey was an obedient servant, as stated in uh, Nelson's Bible. Illustrated Bible Dictionary, Christ rode on an animal that had never been ridden before. It was never broken, but yet it was still a calm creature. It, 
It was prepared to carry burdens or uh, heavy weight. Donkeys were often used to carry and move items of heavy items uh, weight. Even though that he had never been ridden before, this particular donkey was obedient and doing the Lord's biting. We as children of God are encouraged to be like this animal was, to be obedient to the Lord's will and to carry his burden. Remember, um, in Matthew 11, it tells us to carry the yoke or the burden of Christ that he gives us. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, you can read it up there on, on the screen. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His yoke, his burden, it's easy, it's light. It's so easy to get wrapped up in our own little world, to be discouraged with our own problems and our own worries. We sometimes forget to keep our focus on Christ and we get overwhelmed with those problems and those struggles that we face. But when we focus on Christ and get overwhelmed when we get overwhelmed our struggles and are focused on Christ and allow Christ to be in control of our lives, we find that even in the midst of those frustrating times that His burden is so much easier to bear than ours. Christ rode on an obedient animal which carried the burden without kicking, without bucking, without fighting. And the third thing that we see about this is that Christ rode on a donkey and not a war horse. He came on a peace mission. Christ did not come to wage war on the government and the armies of his time. He came in peace. He came to seek and to save the lost. If he rode in on a white horse, his impression would most likely be of war. But here he was coming to, you know, he was not coming to conquer and destroy the earth, but to bring peace. Revelations 19.11 talks about the white horse that is being ridden by Christ and that Christ is coming to judge and make war. This is during the time of tribulation, but notice the difference of what time, type of animal is being ridden, what it represents. Christ did not ride into Jerusalem gung-ho, ready for a fight. He came with humility. Remember Sin was brought forth into this world through the act of disobedience in the Garden of Eden. As a result, we are all born into sin. We are all sinners by human nature. We don't have to teach a newborn child how to sin. They know how to do it instinctively. Romans 3.23 tells us that we have all fallen short of God's glory. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As a result, the penalty or the cost, the wages of sin is death. Someone has to die for sin, and without Jesus, we are headed to an eternal death, separation from God and hell. But God so loved us that we see in John 3:16 that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ paid our debt. He paid it in full. When he says, it is finished, the phrase is actually coming from the Greek word to telestai, which means paid in full. There's no more that we need to pay for our sins. Christ paid it all. For you and me, for our family, our friends, our neighbors, for everyone, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4 shares how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Christ paid in full the debt of sin. As a result, we no longer face eternal death. There is death, either our death or it's Christ's death. Christ died so that we don't have to. But for those who don't believe and receive his gift of salvation, that his death does nothing for them. They end up paying the penalty of sin themselves for an eternal death. But why pay for something that's already been paid for and in full? Acts 16.31 tells us, 
So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So when I think of Palm Sunday, I don't just think of the branches that were cut down, the clothing that was laid in the street before Christ. Instead, I see a message of peace given to the world. A king who came not to wage war, but to bring hope and eternal life. We see that some did believe that he is king, and some did not. Verses 16 through 19. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they were done, that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how, excuse me, perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world has gone after him. There were Jews that saw the works of Christ, as we see there in scriptures about Lazarus. We see how Christ proved to those around him that he had power over death. He raised Lazarus from the grave after being in the grave for four days. This revealed the power that he had over death. It would one day reflect in his own death, the power of God who created life from nothing has the power to bring life back from the grave. And we see this in verse 17. But also, as we see in verse 19, there were those who did not believe that Jesus is the heavenly king. There are many today that do not believe. Everyone has two choices to make in life, either to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, or not to believe on him and to perish. He is indeed king, king of our life, question is, is, does he have our attention? That is, do we follow him? Do we worship him as Lord and King in our every thought, our words and our action? I encourage each and every one today that as, as we, we look through the scriptures today, that you continue to do so each day of the week to have your own personal time. If you uh, have any questions about sharing the gospel with others or any qu questions about your salvation, um, just want to clear things up. Uh, you're welcome to talk with me afterwards. Um, but I encourage you to, to keep, and I know many of you, if not all of you, are already having a daily devotion, and, and that is amazing. That's great. But continue to do so because it is through that that we have a fellowship with the Lord. The King, indeed, who is risen. Let's close on a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, thank you for this day. Thank you that Christ came, and he came humbly. If he came raging into town like he was battling for war, what good would that have done? But he came humbly. He came in peace. He did not come to conquer but he came to seek and save the lost. And Father, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the salvation of each one that is here. Father, we lift our heavenly family before you, and I just pray as we celebrate this Palm Sunday that we continue to focus on you uh, each day of the week, each month of the year, each year of each decade. Help us, Father, to live a life that brings you glory and honor to serve you as we worship you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we uh, do lift our heavenly family before you and, and whatever they do today and throughout the week, as they travel, as they have their tasks and activities, I just pray that you bring blessings in their life and bring encouragement to them. And I just ask for a special week. Can you do lift? Uh, Dennis and his situation before you and I just pray that even today that he can feel your peace and presence and love Father we just lift 
each one before you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to stay safe and strong and healthy. Um, remember, if, if you need anything, you can always give us a call. And uh, even more importantly, remember that God loves you and Julie and I love you. Have a blessed week.